Hello and welcome to my workshop. So we're continuing on with the Ford F-250. It's a 1968 on a Vanquish VS410 chassis. Uh, we were able to get the cab completed with an opening hood. Uh, some detail with the grill. Still a lot more to go, but making really good progress. So let's get started. With the cab and bed mostly complete, it's time to turn my focus on the engine bay. The first thing I need to sort out is the radiator support. This will become a critical piece since it will be used to hold down the hood with magnets. I also wanted this piece to be bolted in to make it easier to paint. The support is a pretty simple design which is a flat piece of 60,000 styrene and some shapes glued to the top. The reason for starting with the radiator support first is to define the length of the engine bay. With this complete, I can move on to make the inner fenders. These are blockier than I would have expected. This made it easy for me to use an additive process for making the molds, instead of carving out the material. I simply glued shapes with the correct angles together. The result gives a very accurate representation of the inner fender. Once the basic shape is complete, I add in styrene pieces to bulk up areas and use rotary tool to cut in recessed areas. The last thing to do is transition all the pieces and edges with sandpaper and files. If you haven't used files, you need to give them a try. You'll be surprised at how fast and accurate they can be. With both sides complete, the vacuum table is fired up and two shapes created. Like the radiator support, I wanted the inner fenders to bolt in. There are three solid areas which have attachment points. The fender has screws placed directly down from above. For the moment, I use button head screws, but these will be changed out to scale hardware after the painting is complete. The last two spots for mounting are on the firewall and the radiator support. This makes the inner fenders rock solid and adds rigidity to the front of the truck. I was a little nervous about the shock towers intruding too much into the engine bay. The VS410 pleasantly surprised me with how wide the front towers are placed. This, along with the shape of the engine bay, made it able to have them pretty much disappear. I have seen a few engine bays where it's obvious where the shock towers are, and was glad I didn't have to deal with that. 
I've been getting into more 3D printed parts lately. I continued that with the radiator. The radiator was a recycled piece from a previous project. I copied over the file and was able to cut it up digitally before putting it all back together in the shape and size I needed for the opening. Instead of taking time for a simple mount, I just made one from styrene. I think this is a good way to look at building. Take whatever path is the quickest and gives you the end result you're looking for. The radiator is bolted onto the support from the front. This will allow me to access it through the grill once it is installed. The center of the VS410 is set up to hold two servos, one being steering and the other a servo winch. I swapped out the servo winch spot for my ESC. They're about the same height in the end. A simple flat piece of styrene is used to span them both. This shape will eventually have the engine bolted to it and be camouflaged to disappear. I started off with an engine I found on eBay. Eventually this will be swapped out, but I wanted to leave it in to show how things often need to change in a build. Don't be afraid to take a few steps back and fix something. The engine is used to clip on a motor and houses a fan. This fan pulls air into the air intake filter and pushes it down over the motor. Due to the construction, I was able to remove the lower motor mount and graft it onto the flat styrene plate. The result is similar where air is pushed over the ESC and flows through the air intake. As you can see, the engine is now swapped out with one that is properly sized. As mentioned, I bought the first one off eBay and the specs were not great. So I took the engine and redrew it in Fusion 360. A few of the pieces, such as distributor and air intake, were reused though. But the majority was made from my resin printer. The function remains the same, where the air moves through the center to cool the ESC.
With the correctly sized engine in place, I moved to a cooling shroud for the radiator. I thought about having a modern electric fan, but decided an old school clutch fan would look the best. A piece of MDF was built up and carved down to shape. To get the opening, I used a set of round cookie cutters. This gave me the shape I needed in pencil and I could follow the lines with my rotary tool. The shroud gets glued in place to the radiator. I thought about going into more detail for the firewall, but in the end decided to go with more of a sparse design. A simple raised area was added along with the quarter round styrene shape to give it a look without going too overboard. The inner fenders did a great job of filling in the area under the fenders. However, there was still some gaps where the cab met up with the firewall and inner fenders. You probably would never see these, but left open they would allow the chassis to get packed with dirt and debris. I used some aluminum angle pieces to close these in. Once painted black, they would pretty much disappear. Whenever possible, I like to shorten the servo wires and not spool up the excess. This is easily accomplished with a servo end connector kit and a crimp tool. The engine bay isn't quite complete, but there is enough there to move on to the interior. The first step is to pad out the door to give it a flat spot the door panels can be mounted. I just take a piece of printer paper and press it into the area with my fingers. This gives me a close enough shape that can be refined before cutting it from styrene. When I built the dash, I left off the dash cover on purpose. The dash cover is a very organic shape and is best completed using the Create Form tool in Fusion 360. Making these shapes is a lot like carving wood. It takes practice and muscle memory. Therefore I decided to make the cover out of a vacuum form styrene instead. I am working on increasing my skills in the form tool, but it will take time. <laughs> 
After sanding, grinding, and cutting, the shape was matched up with the 3D printed part. Once I was happy, supports were added to hold it in position on the vacuum table. The dash I am modeling has an air unit, which hangs below the dash. I modeled these as separate pieces and glued them into place later. Having separate pieces gives options as well as makes the 3D modeling process a little easier. For example, I reused the air vents from a previous project on this one. Like so much of this truck, I wanted the interior floorboard to bolt in place. My idea is to have the seat bolted to this piece so it can all be dropped in as one unit. Styrene shapes are solvent glued into place so I can later sink M2 screws into them. It adds a little thickness to the bottom, which isn't quite accurate, but I feel it's a good compromise to get a removable interior section that is held in place firmly. The shape of the cab is traced onto a sheet of styrene to start out the process for making the floor panels. It might take a few tries to get it right, but once it is, the piece gets marked up and cut out. I'm using the area below the bench seat for the battery. It's pretty tight, but there's enough room for a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. When I worked on the F100 build, I found out that making seats from vacuum form tables was a lot easier than expected. For some reason, I always stayed away from this in the past. To get started, MDF is glued together and I draw a rough shape that can be sanded back. <laughs> 
Most seats have a pleated look where the seam is placed. This means the material is pulled inward toward the seam. When you take a step back and look at it, it, it looks flat, but in, re in reality, it has dips everywhere there is a seam. This is replicated by removing material straight down the seam and carefully sanding back to the seam from each side. This small step gives the needed dimensionality the seat requires. Here you can see what pieces look like coming directly from the vacuum table. I first cut the part into individual pieces before cutting back so the mold can be removed. Oftentimes the part splits when being removed. In order to get the shapes you want, this is sometimes unavoidable. Just remember, we are gluing this all together, so making the repair is no big deal. The first seat I made was just glued together in a fixed position. You couldn't see down the side, so there's really no need to represent the seat back hinges. This was not the case here, so I designed a hinge that was 3D printed. It was an afterthought, but by bolting the bottom versus gluing, allows the seat to actually function. The bed has a full depth floor, which means cutting giant holes to allow the shock towers to poke through. I'm going for an overlander theme, so some cargo boxes were used to cover up the shock towers. I just needed to cut a small hole into the bottom, which matches up to the hole cut for the shock towers. After both sides are bolted in from underneath, the holes in the shock towers disappear. To go with the overland theme, a tent was placed in a simple metal rack over the bed. This is a 3D printed tent from Night Customs. The rack is made from stainless steel capillary tubing and brass rectangular shapes. I use some tabs from Scale Metal Supplies as the hold down feet. If you haven't picked up some of his tabs, you really are missing out. It's such a great time saver. The brass tube solders easily to the stainless steel tubing. I use Safety Seal 45 with their pace flux. Just a few short bursts from a map gas torch and the solder flows into the joint. These are surprisingly strong joints. And if like me, you don't have a welder, this is a great option for making strong, functional metal parts. I printed the tent hollow to save weight and more importantly resin. That stuff is really pricey. If you ever get resin printed parts, don't balk at the price. They are not gouging you. It is not as cheap as filament printing. <laughs> 
thin piece of styrene is glued to the bottom, which gives me spots to mount it to the rack. The rack fits nicely into the bed and screws can be accessed from above and below to hold it in place. So this truck is really coming together and I am so excited to continue. There are a few projects I'm gearing up to start which are going to be amazing. Until then, I'll see you on the rocks.